Hello, beautiful soul. My name is Jen Merkel. I am a transformational life coach and a certified hypnosis practitioner. I'm here today to talk about how to make and ways to use moon water. But first, make sure you do like this video, hit the little thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can learn more about what I do, schedule a free consultation or sign up for my wellness newsletter at my website, jenmerkelhypnosis.com. Also very quickly, I do co-host a podcast with my soul sister, April Darley. It's called Spiritual Basics Podcast, and we do talk about the moon quite a bit. So if you're interested in this video, chances are you're really gonna like the podcast. You can find it on your favorite listening platforms and also right here on YouTube. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with different ways to use moon water. Uh, there are a million and three different ways that you can actually use moon water. So I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about some of my favorite ways and the ways that I usually use it. Moon water is fantastic for healing and I'm gonna start out with a little story about my pup, Karma. She's a Pembroke Welsh Corgi. You've probably seen pictures of her if you follow me on social media. Once in a while, she does make a cameo appearance on my videos. Anyway, she was born with some kind of difficulty with her eye. I've been battling it ever since I got her. She's about a year and a half now. And the vet thinks that it has something to do with her left eye not producing tears the way it's supposed to. So I've been giving her eye drops and they kind of sometimes work, they kind of sometimes don't. In the last full moon we had, I made some moon water and it was the wolf moon. And I thought, wow, this is a really good opportunity to take some of that moon water and put it in her eye drops. So I did put a little bit in her bottle, the bottle of eye drops that I use. And I've been using that on her every day and it was like magic, literally it was moon magic because within a day, her eye just like that, you would never even know that she had an issue with her eye. Now, I'm still doing that on a daily basis, but I'm hoping maybe it'll heal her overall, but still she looks fantastic. I'll, I'll show a little picture because I mean, she's so adorable, right? <laughs> anyway, so uh, here, look at her. You would never even know if she has any issues with her eyes. So that's just an example of a way that you can use it for healing. I also like to use the moon water when I take my supplements in the morning. So sometimes I'll take them with juice or water or sometimes iced tea. I just take a little bit of that moon water and put it in there because it's kind of like a supplement. It's good for you know the overall healing and staying healthy on a regular basis. And even if maybe you have a headache or you're not feeling great, you can take a little bit of that moon water, drink a little bit of it, or just splash a little bit on your face or whatever that is going to transfer that energy and help with that healing. And by the way, you might have noticed that in each of these cases, I'm talking about using just a little bit of the moon water. When you make the moon water, you're gonna want it to last at least until the next moon cycle because you don't wanna run out. So again, you only need a little bit and it, it's like, you know, if you had, let's say you had some food coloring and you add it to the water, it dissipates throughout the water, right? It's the same thing with moon water. When you add just a little tiny bit, it dissipates with the rest of it. So you're good to go. You don't need to have it full concentrate. Moon water is great for protection. So I like to use it when I do a house clearing, when I'm clearing my home, at the end, after I do the actual clearing ritual, I will go around the perimeter of my home and just sprinkle a little bit, oh, sorry, let me back up a little bit. First, I add a little bit of salt to the moon water, and then I sprinkle a little bit all around the perimeter of my home. So it kind of acts as a little energetic force field and helps with protection. Moon water is fantastic to use during rituals. So if you have any kind of ritual that you like to do, personally, I like to do one during the dark moon, also known as the new moon, um, also the, the full moon. And then during different celebrations, like we just recently had Imbolc, and then we've got Asara coming up, so I'll be using moon water for that. If you do a ritual and you cast a circle, you might use moon water as part of that ritual. Um, when I cast my circle, I do do the salt and sprinkle it around the perim perimeter, just like I said about my home when I do the home clearing. I do the same thing when I cast my circle as a layer of protection. 
that moon water is also really good to use as an offering. So if you are honoring a certain deity or maybe some fairies or elementals or anything like that, using that moon water as an offering is an excellent idea. Or if your ritual includes drinking something like drinking wine or drinking water, obviously putting a little bit of moon water in that is going to help add a little bit of that energy as well. And for daily use, I mean, you can, there's so many different ways to use water, you know, putting a little bit in the plant water that when you use to water your plants is great. It's a great way to feed them that energy and keep them going. If you do any kitchen witchcraft, you can certainly use it for that. I don't do that type of thing per se, but you can use it in baking or cooking or anything like that. Just put a little splash of that in there as that little extra energy and extra love. Even when you're taking a bath, you know, if you have ever taken a spiritual bath and used it kind of as a rite or a ritual for yourself, even just a self-care Sunday, if you wanna do that, when you've got your bath bomb and your candles and your glass of wine, put a little bit of that moon water in that bath water and really keep that energy going. So those are my favorite ways to use moon water. If you have another way that you like to use it, please tell me in the comments. I'd really like to hear about it. Okay, so now let's talk about how to make moon water. Now, I should probably say there's not really a wrong way to do it. I mean, what feels right for you is what you should do. I'm just going to tell you about how I do it and that's based on a lot of common practices and also my own intuition. Again, follow your gut and do what works best for you. First, you want to get some water, of course. Now, I like to use a glass container because it's kind of more energetically clear. I don't like using metals when I'm working with water, and I definitely try to avoid plastic because it's kind of a artificial or man-made material. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do that. I think it's just better energetically, at least that's how I feel, is using glass. So what you're gonna wanna do is fill it with water. I mean, I could use a bigger container than this if I wanted to, but usually this pint mason jar, I think it's a pint, right? Yeah, um, is enough for me to carry me to the next full moon. Now, one thing, again, I like to use natural materials as much as possible. I don't like using tap water. I don't even like drinking tap water because there's so many chemicals in there and even the drug fluoride is in there, so in most communities. So I really prefer to use spring water. If you don't have access to spring water, you can use distilled water or you can use any kind of purified water. Reverse osmosis would be fine. But it, worst case scenario, if all you had was tap water, that would be absolutely fine. I would just say that if you're gonna use tap water, do an energetic clearing on that water before you actually make the moon water. If you want, you can use a crystal to help make that moon water. I don't always use crystals when making moon water. And if you do, just make sure it's something that is safe for water. This is a clear quartz and this is definitely safe for water. Selenite, satin spar, those are not water safe, for example. So if you wanna use those crystals, you certainly can. Just put them next to the moon water when you put it outside rather than actually in the moon water. Now, this guy I am gonna put in the moon water to help boost that moon energy because clear quartz is an amplifier. It amplifies the energy. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that this is clean, even just physically clean, because I am gonna use some of that moon water for drinking. So I just wanna make sure that this wasn't like in my plant or <laughs> whatever, covered with essential oils, anything like that. I wanna make sure that if I can, <laughs> if I feel safe licking it, then I'm gonna put it in the water. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop that right in. Now with that crystal in there, I'm going to set the intention for the moon water. And I usually like to match that intention with whatever type of moon it is. For example, this one we have coming up is February. It is the full moon in Virgo. So I'm gonna use, tap into some of that Virgo energy and use that. You can also use the type of moon it is. For example, it's called the snow moon. So that snow energy, uh, that, that wintry snow kind of freeze energy, slowing things down and resting, that's a really good one to use, for example. So just again, use what works for you. 
but just go ahead and set your intention. Okay, now that you have your water ready to go, I recommend putting a lid on it. Now, I myself, I just, you know, pretty much bashed plastic, but that's all I have are plastic lids. So I'm gonna do that. You don't have to put a lid to it, but honestly, I don't feel comfortable putting something out like this outside without putting a lid on it because, you know, there might be bugs in there that fly in there or a bird might try to drink from it. And I just don't want that mixed with something I'm gonna eventually end up drinking. Maybe it's the Virgo in me just being a little too much of a germaphobe. Um, but if it doesn't bother you, go for it. I mean, especially if you're not gonna be using it to drink. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and set that somewhere where the moon shines on it. Now I'll wait until sundown. And that's only because I don't want the sun energy in the water. I don't have anything against the sun, but I'm making moon water here, right? So I will set it out somewhere where the moon is going to shine on it as it goes over my property. I don't like to put it directly on concrete. I'll usually put it on top of a plate or something like that. And also I often charge crystals around it uh, because I like to charge those in the full moon. And so I'll do that. But basically that's as simple as it is. You just put it where the moon's gonna shine. Now something to keep in mind, if for some reason it's a cloudy night or it's not safe to put it out there or maybe it's freezing outside or maybe you don't have an area where the moon actually can shine on it. Maybe you're in an apartment and your balcony doesn't even have an area like that. Whatever the case, if this, the moon isn't gonna be able to actually shine on it, that's okay because energetically it can still absorb that moon energy. So shining, having the moon shine directly on it is the best case scenario. Second best case scenario is putting it in a windowsill where the moon will shine on it. Third best case scenario is putting it on a windowsill where the moon doesn't shine on it. Worst case scenario is just having it on a table or shelf or your altar and setting an intention for that moon energy to be shining on it. And really intention is the most important thing. So even though that's the worst case scenario, it's not so bad. Something else to keep in mind is that the energy from the moon cycle is active two days before and two days after the moon is at its peak. So for example, the full moon we have coming up is February 27th. So that means starting on February 25th and going all the way until March 1st, that full moon energy is going to be active. So really you have a five day span of time that you can make moon water. So if you forget, uh, I've done that before <laughs> where I've forgotten and I've gotten in just in time so that you're still getting that energy even before and after the full moon is at its peak. One very important other thing to keep in mind, it's not really a good time usually to make moon water during an active eclipse. Now, an eclipse only happens during a really small window. So for example, the eclipse in December actually happened on the full moon. However, the moon water I made a couple days beforehand, two days beforehand, and the eclipse wasn't actually active. There was no eclipse energy at that time. So I, you know, obviously I've been using the moon water successfully, as you know from the story I just told. So that would be okay. Just make sure that you don't have it out during that time. And the reason is, because eclipse energy brings a lot of dark energies and hidden things. And it's also really, really like, that's when the ghouls come out, so to speak. So you don't wanna really bring that kind of energy into your practice on a regular basis. At least I don't recommend it. Some people like to work with that energy and if that's you, then go for it. So all you have to do now is just sit and wait. So the next morning, before the sun rises, if you can, or at least before the sun shines on your moon water, go ahead and retrieve it from outside and it's good to go. Now my moon water, I like to keep it on the counter next to my sink because it kind of reminds me as I'm using water, it's kind of like something I can grab and toss in when I need to. So it's really convenient that way. You can also keep it in your bathroom, keep it on your altar, keep it in your nightstand. Anywhere that works for you is going to be best for you. So I hope you enjoy these ideas on how to use moon water and how to make moon water. I'd really love to hear about your own experience, either using or making moon water. So please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you next time.